800 years ago, he was a revered martial god, the crown prince of Zionel. Now, he ascends to the heavenly realm for the third time, but is a pitiful god who collects scraps and has no followers. After incurring a debt of 8 million merit credits, the main protagonist, Zylion is tasked with heading to the mortal realm to deal with a ghost bridegroom, that is kidnapping brides on Mount Yujun. He made his way to Yujun Mountain stopping by a tea house. While relaxing, he gets distracted by a silver butterfly and gets notified that he will be assisted by Nan Feng and Fu Yao, and they discuss the case together. During their discussion, they notice a group of villagers carrying a sedan. A woman called, Xiao Ying comes running towards the group of villagers carrying the sedan to warn the bride that she's being used as a decoy, but it turns out the villagers used a doll. The leader of the group starts to assault her but is saved by Xi Lion. Later in the night, Xi Lion, Fu Yao, and Nan Feng seek shelter in a temple of Feng Xin. In their conversation they soon come up with the plan to disguise Xi Lion as a bride to lure out the ghost bridegroom, as they escort Xi Lion's sedan. Xi Lion suddenly hears someone singing. He's the only one who can hear it. At the same time the men notice that some wolves wanted to attack. Xi Lion orders them to leave him behind. As he waits, someone suddenly offers him a hand through the sedan curtain. Xi Lion takes his hand and they walk together through the forest. They stop and the mysterious man attempts to lift Xi Lion's veil, but he immediately attacks. Despite Xi Lion's efforts, the mysterious man smiles and dissolves himself into silver butterflies, guiding Xi Lion into an abandoned temple. He enters and discovers the 17 missing brides, who were already dead. He suddenly heard someone coming in which was revealed to be the ghost bridegroom. He quickly hides among the brides. As the ghost checks the brides, Xi Lion tries to attack it. However, it turns into a black fog and escapes. Following the fog, Xi Lion meets the villagers outside. Nan Feng and Fu Yao soon joined him too. He asks the villager if they found something strange, although they found nothing. One of the villagers notices and drags out Xiao Ying who had secretly followed the group. They accused her of being the ghost, but after some explanation, it was clear she wasn't the ghost. The villagers plan to take away the brides and collect the reward. After they take off the veils and see a beautiful bride, one villager begins to touch her. Suddenly he was stoned by someone, and they followed a shadow that had run into the forest. In the forest, they discovered corpses hanging up on the trees. Fu Yao and Nan Feng tell Xi Lion that this is the doing of Kai Rong, a near devastation ghost. Xi Lion and Nan Feng enter the temple again to investigate, noticing that instead of 17 there are 18 veils. They both conclude that the ghost bridegroom is not a groom, but a vicious bride. After the dead brides came back to life, the villagers ran back and sought shelter in the courtyard of the Ming Guang Temple. Xi Lion tries to distract the brides with Roy, but after more villagers came into the courtyard, the brides once again start attacking. Xi Lion creates a protection circle to protect the villagers. Xi Lion begins to fight the brides and contacts Ling Wen through spiritual communication. Asking if Pei Ming ever had a lover who was obsessive and disabled, Ling Wen confirms the story about a woman called Chu and Jai. The ghost bride comes out of the temple, upset that Pei Ming still hasn't come to see her. She kills the youngster and attacks Xi Lion, causing Xiao Ying to try and stop her. As she gets hit by Xu and Jai, causing her to bleed out as she passes away. Right before her last breath Xi Lion promises he will take care of Lang Ying in her place. As Xu and Jai tries to counter-attack a golden light suddenly breaks through the clouds and a loud bell rings. Pei Zhu and other military officials have arrived and arrest Xu and Jai to seal her under a mountain. Pei Zhu thanks Xi Lion for the help and begins to explain the full story of Xu and Jai and Pei Ming. Later Xi Lion and Nan Feng reunite with Fu Yao while Xu and Zhen palace officials clean up the bodies in the forest. They go bury Xi Ying together with Lang Ying when Xi Lion notices that he is still bleeding. Wang Ying takes off his bandages and it turns out he is infected with the human face disease. Xi Lian is shocked to see Lang Ying has the human face disease, but Lang Ying runs away before he can ask further. Xi Lian asks his companions to track Lang Ying as soon as possible. When Xi Lian gets he gets to talk with the heavenly officials. Everyone ends up finding out that Xi Lian met Hua Cheng up on the mountain. The heavenly officials tell him about the four great calamities. The story of how Hua Cheng beat 33 martial and civil gods, causing them to be demoted and forgotten. Later, Ling Wen tells Xi Lian his debt has almost been cleared. He tells her that he has decided to go to the mortal realm and build a temple for himself. Xi Lian goes into the village to collect scraps throughout the day. 
While walking back home, he notices an ox cart and gets on to ride with it. As he reads through the scrolls, another person on the cart suddenly speaks to him. Since he looks knowledgeable about gods, Xi Lion asks if he knows about ghosts too. Xi Lion and the young man continued to talk. As Xi Lion marvels at the name Crimson Rain Sought Flower, the man explains how Hua Cheng gained this title, that his ashes are his weakness, and how Hua Cheng gouged out his right eye. They exchanged names as the young man introduced himself as San Lang. As they notice a clan of hooded ghosts approaching from the distance, Xi Lion quickly puts up a barrier turning them invisible. The ghosts finally sense their presence and chase them. Xi Lion amid trouble tries to have a conversation but to no avail. When San Lang glares at them the ghosts quickly retreat. As they reach Puki Shrine, San Lang is about to leave when Xi Lion invites him to stay the night and agrees to the proposition. Xi Lion quickly wakes up the ox cart driver before heading inside. While Xi Lion is preparing a straw mattress that was to be their shared bed, San Lang mentions that the temple is missing a painting of the god and offers to paint one the following day. Hearing this, Xi Lion is happy that he knows of the crown prince of Zional. San Lang once again stares at his bandaged neck and ankle which flusters Xi Lion. The next morning, Xi Lion notices a painting of the crown prince hanging above the altar. He finds San Lang cleaning outside and praises him for the artwork. He offers to do San Lang's hair and while combing, checks for any flaws to determine if he's a ghost once again. They spend the day repairing and cleaning the temple until the ox cart driver shows up. Suddenly another group of villagers brings in an old man in horrible condition asking for help. As the old man wakes up inside of Puki Shrine, he tries to explain his situation since he escaped from Banyu's pass. But Xi Lion notices that the man is not human and tries to grab him. The man's arm deflates and while he tries to flee away, Saland impales his ankle with a chopstick which makes him crumble. After the examination, Xi Lion tries to consult unsuccessfully the Heaven's Communication Array about their clue at Banyu. As he gets back he goes back to cleaning the shrine up, until there's a knock on the door. Fu Yao and Nan Feng have come back in aid of Xi Lion's journey. As they notice San Lang they try to interrogate him, but Xi Lion tries to calm them up and Nan Feng starts to draw the distance shortening array. As they walk through the desert they find an abandoned house to rest in. So Fu Yao and Nan Feng use the opportunity to further investigate San Lang's true identity. Xi Lian notices two female figures running while looking out the since they suspect them. They decide to follow them, a heavy around them. Xi Lian suddenly gets blown away by the wind and attempting to hold on to something solid he ends up grabbing San Lang with his silk band weapon. Xi Lian manages to use his silk band to grab everyone else. As they manage to the land they seek shelter in a cave. They decide to investigate the cave as they do deeper they find some caravan merchants who also sought shelter. Wondering how they decided to travel in such deadly territory they meet a Zhao, a local guide. Xi Lion notices late that he decided to sit on a stone tablet. As he checked it he noticed that it had something written in Banyuanese and deciphers some part of it. He determines that it was the tombstone for a general from Yongsen. One of the merchants spots one of many poisonous snakes, a scorpion snake, as everyone tries to escape. Xi Lion notices a snake trying to attack San Lang and decides to protect him. As he gets stung San Lang decides to suck out the poison himself. When Xi Lion gets better they decide Xi Lion. San Lang and Nan Feng should head to the Shan Yu Fern with the guide's help. They arrive after the sunset. Walking through the streets they notice someone coming so they hide. It was the two women wondering where Xi Lion and the rest went. One of the women goes near them and stops, turning towards the building Xi Lion and San Lang were hiding in. Since Xi Lion and San Lang are trapped in their hiding spots, Nan Feng causes an explosion and exchanges some blows. He runs away as the two women follow him. Xi Lion and San Lang head to the palace in search of Shanai Fern. As San Lang finds it, he applies on the bitten area of Xi Lion's hand and instantly heals it. The group decides to disperse further to search for more when a scream rings through the air it was from a man's face poking out of the mud. The face tells them that he was caught by the Banyu soldiers and was buried here to be used as a fertilizer for the Shanyu Fern. The commotion alerts the Banyu soldiers and their general, who arrive to take the group hostage. The general orders a Zhao and Tian Sheng to be thrown into the pit, but suddenly a Zhao charges forward to fight Kimo, only to be tossed back and down the sinner's pit. Just as Xi Lion decides to jump in first, he spots San Lang, standing silently at the edge of the pit before he willingly lets himself fall inside. Soundless words emit from San Lang's mouth as he falls. Xi Lion is only shocked at San Lang's actions. Xi Lion decides to jump into the sinner's pit after San Lang, but Kimo stops him. After managing to pull the general down with him, 
Psy Lion fails to get up because there's an invisible barrier blocking his silk band. He gets caught by someone and soon discovers it's San Lang, who seems to be different from before. He notices San Lang has no heartbeat and doesn't breathe, as if he wasn't alive. As Kimo finds all of his soldiers dead and attacks them, San Lang beats him up with a scimitar without even putting Xi Lion down. San Lang questions whether he's not more interested in him being not human, to which Xi Lion replies that what matters is if they get along well, not who they are. They start questioning Kimo, who at first doesn't want to cooperate, but he starts talking after they promise that they want to kill the Imperial Preceptor and threaten him with the bodies of his soldiers. Xi Lion tells him to calm down, but San Lang shushes him. The Imperial Preceptor that they were talking about jumps into the pit. She then notices the soldiers are no longer of this world. She says they're finally free from this endless cycle. She asks who did this, and Xi Lion says this is an accident. He further explains that he's a heavenly official and San Lang is his friend. Kimo loses his cool and starts to brutally beat the Imperial Preceptor. Xi Lion comes to the rescue and stops him, as the Imperial Preceptor recognizes Xi Lion as General Hua. After looking at her closely he figures out it's Ban Yu. Xi Lion explains that 200 years ago he accidentally ended up in the desert, and consequently got forcibly recruited by soldiers. He was called by his alias Hua Xi and some soldiers called him General. He met Ban Yu who was hungry at that time. Xi Lion gave him some food to ease her hunger. Ever since that day she followed Xi Lion everywhere. Ban Yu is asked about her intentions and she replies that it was because they disobeyed her reasons. Ban Yu tries to escape but fails at it. During the process to everyone's shock snakes start to fall from above the sinner's pit. Since everyone is stuck in the sinner's pit, Fu Yao accuses Ban Yu of using the snakes since they aren't hostile towards them. But San Lang states that he's the only one being attacked by the snakes. Fu Yao then says San Lang is responsible for this mess. San Lang realizes more and more snakes are falling. So he pulls out a crimson umbrella and shields Xi Lion along with it. Xi Lion deduces there's another person hidden in the cave apart from them, and suddenly Ban Yu got kidnapped by someone. Out of nowhere, a dangerous sword comes by but San Lang brings out his weapon and stops it from harming Xi Lion. San Lang fights the person and figures out it's Pei Zhu. Using all the clues he finds out he's a Zhao in disguise. Xi Lian realizes he's Ban Yu's childhood friend who saved her multiple times when she got beaten up by Ban Yu kids. Since she thought General Hua was dead, she wanted to avenge him. A female voice from above the pit interrupts by saying did Pei Zhu not regret killing all those innocent merchants. As they look up they notice that woman is the real wind master. She scolds Pei Zhu and gives Xi Lian a jar to transfer Ban Yu inside. The three go back to Tian Sheng's group to heal his infected uncle. When everyone leaves, Xi Lian asks Hua Cheng what he would like to eat. As San Lang gets closer he tells Xi Lian to call him by his alias. With Xi Lian cooking dinner at Puki Shrine, he has a conversation with Hua Cheng, claiming that it feels different when Hua Cheng refers to him as his highness. He asks why Hua Cheng was doing a new Jun Mountain. He replies that he either was bored or he went for Xi Lian specifically. Hua Cheng asks him how Xi Lian knew his real identity. Xi Lian replies it was due to his clothing and fearless attitude. Xi Lian asks if he can see his original look, but Hua Cheng apologizes since a supreme ghost wouldn't show its true self. Xi Lian realizes his cooking got ruined and he wants to sleep. While laying down asks Hua Cheng says what if his original look is hideous. Xi Lian tries to say that he won't judge him but Hua Cheng turns around and appears to be looking as if he's crying. As Xi Lian tries to check on him, he finds out Hua Cheng is laughing. Xi Lian says goodnight out of frustration. Hua Cheng replies saying that the next time they meet again he'll show his true appearance. The story ends the next morning, as Xi Lian wakes up and finds a silver necklace on his neck without any clue about Hua Cheng's whereabouts. This is all for this anime. Give the video a like, and I will see you in the next minutes.